And we have one grandparent, Bichara, he doesn't even know how to use an app. He doesn't know how to use his phone. Uh, doesn't have a so phone. Sad. It yeah. is so sad. And these guys are earning half a million dollars at Google. Like, buy exactly. your bapu a phone, yeah. Like, seriously? Yes. Get yeah. a bloody buy phone for him. Or hire a nanny. Hire a nanny. Yeah, hire what a bloody yeah. nanny. Hire help. You're making half a million dollars. You live yes. in a two and a half million dollar house and you're treating yeah. your, your parents like parents I am. Parents like that. Yeah, it's, it's not okay. It's, it's very not sad, okay. yeah. I mean, there's yeah. an age, you know, when, like, I'm happy to babysit my grandkids, but right. after after a certain age, I'm 60, right. but I know when I get to like 70 plus, it's right. not going to be easy. No, it yeah, should be. Right it should be. It should be a fun thing. It shouldn't have yeah. to seem like a. And chore, that's right? a great topic yeah. for next time because yeah. elders yeah. in our About community. How, forget elderly. How Indians, particularly, you know, yeah, Americans will go put culture. their. It's yeah, Americans culture. will go put their parents in assisted living and yes. and whatever. That's another yes. culture in itself. They leave them, not visit them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Except for Mother's them. Day, Father's Day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So I'm. I think we're all here. So let okay. me get ready to live stream on uh, Facebook. Let me get that all set up right now. It's asking me all these questions. So let me do that. Zoom meeting, yeah. Okay. Share on my timeline. Public group. Okay. Go live. All right, we're going live, ladies. Sounds good. Yes, it's just getting. And nice we're also you. live on um, the okay. TV as well. Okay, so I'm just about to go live and I'll start the recording in a minute. So there we go. Where is my. All right, where's my meeting going there? Recording in progress. Re Reno, are you introducing me or do I say one or two lines? About We're ready myself? to go and uh, I will introduce. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'll just begin. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Reno Dillon from Building Women Empowered. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, here's another session on a Wednesday evening. We meet once a month and it's called Meet to Motivate, where we talk about topics that are affecting the community overall, especially women. And uh, I've decided now that I'm getting older, even though I've changed the color of my hair and I'm not gray anymore, I've decided I'm going to take a seat back and I want to participate as a panelist and I want other uh, women in our group to start hosting the show. My sincere apologies, first of all, to Gauri. Last time when we were in the show and I was recording it, I lost power. And I don't know what happened to Zoom and it stopped recording. Uh -oh. So I wish I could retrieve that. So next show you're going to host again. And I promise you this time you can record with me as well. <laughs> but that was a big boo-boo from my side. But okay. anyway, I'm going to step back and I'm going to throw the show over to Arti, who is one of our regular active panelists. And today she's going to be the host of the show. So over to you, Arti, and you can do your own introduction just like everybody else is going to. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Reno, and the wonderful panelists that have joined us today, and those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live and on Via TV Live. Uh, my name is Arthi Kaushal Chopra. I'm a community educator and the founder and president of the Sanskriti Legacy Nonprofit. I'm a big mental health advocate and community educator, and women, youth, and modern day solutions for modern day problems is my passion. And I have been so grateful to join Building Women Empowered precisely because it provides an incredible platform from women of all backgrounds. And there's no judgment here. And we tackle real life topics with real life solutions. And so that started this Meet to Motivate talk show series. Today's the sixth episode. And today we are dealing with misogyny from both sides, women and men. And what an apt and appropriate topic to open up. Uh, I think each one of us is going to be bringing wonderful stories. Well, uh, not really wonderful, but a wonderful, eye-opening, honest sharing. And we're gonna go bold. We don't go back, <laughs> we go bold. And so um, without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to our first panelist to introduce herself. And before I do that, I want to thank Raina Dillon once again for opening up this platform for all women to openly, boldly speak their mind and their truth. Gauri, go ahead. 
Hi, I'm Gauri. I'm a business executive and the current training title holder of Miss NRI Global. Uh, I love participating in these discussions with BWE. I am very passionate about helping animals and the elderly, so I'm very excited about the next topic that's coming up too that was suggested by Renum. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and turning it over to our next guest, actually, Renu, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Okay, well, thank you, Aarti, and uh, it's always wonderful to, to be with all these amazing ladies. I'm Renu Dillon, I'm the founder of BWE, and I'm also the founder of Genius Kids uh, and Genius Kids Development, which is a childcare franchise. Um, been actively involved in women and children issues for most of my life, had many personal experiences. And the reason I started building Women Empowered is I really felt that there was a need for a forum. There are many women groups out there, but, you know, they're posting saris and, you know, and dance groups or whatever. And that's great. And, and no offense to them. That's wonderful. But I really felt there had to be a group that was focusing on actual women empowerment, you know, um, actually getting to know what help we need and a forum where anytime you need something, you just come to this forum, you can message me privately, ask for any kind of help. And, it, and we're there to try and help you. So enjoy the show today. Uh, we have an amazing group of ladies and a wonderful topic. So thank you, Reno. And um safe to say that each one of us has been inspired by you in our own ways and we deeply appreciate it and giving us these opportunities. I'll turn it over to our next panelist, uh, Viva Sikri. Viva, go ahead. Good evening, ladies. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. Um, this is my second panel, so I'm still a little nervous, but uh, it's great coming on here and talking. So um, I'm actually, uh, I have a finance major, but for the past few years, I've been a stay-at-home mom uh, and I love writing. I love traveling and I consider myself to be a world citizen, like I said last time. And um, I'm actually in the job market looking for something um, very interested in the area of uh, disabilities. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you for having me on. Wonderful, Viva. Happy to have you here. And... Last but not least, Ranjita Pabla. Go ahead, Ranjita. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, this is Ranjita, and I work for a nonprofit organization who works with the victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, child abuse, and human trafficking. I'm one of the advocates and the counselor and a crisis line specialist. So I always look forward to helping women who are in crisis. And that's what I are being through abuse, through a lot of different stuff. So let's talk about it. Amazing. Thank you, Ranjita. And for all the, the hard work that you do with some difficult um, subject matter and difficult um you know, women and children victims, which falls right into today's topic of misogyny. Thank you. You're welcome. So before we jump into the questions and starting the panels, uh, misogyny, how are we defining misogyny? And um, if you if you all had a chance to look at the flyer, um, misogyny, in simple words, is considered the hate against women and girls. It also includes prejudice and promotes harmful stereotypes of, of gender, harmful gender stereotypes. The word misogyny comes from the Greek roots misine, which means hate, and gyne, which means women. Now, uh, Rita, do you want me to um, mention the Tiger Woods example that you put on the flyer? No, I'll, I'll bring that up. <laughs> All right. That, <laughs> Talk that, about that him. Come from you. <laughs> That's very appropriate Reno yeah. material. Yeah. Um, so basically, misogyny is also not just a psychological issue that lurks in the hearts and minds of everyone, irrespective of man, woman, boy, girl, but it is a system in which nearly everyone is culpable consciously or unconsciously. And there are many institutionalized systems and media that are culpable as well. So without further ado, we'll jump right into our uh, first segment. Um, and, and our, into our first round. So in this round, panelists are going to share their personal thoughts or experiences on this topic. 
and we will each share one experience. And I'll actually go ahead and start and it'll be quick. But this is very, very painful for me because it's one thing for women to experience misogyny from men or males, but it's another to experience it from our own women, our own female gender. And um, I have, uh, you know, th there are many overlapping issues here. There's not just misogyny, but there's also ageism. You know, when you experience misogyny from women who are older because they think you're younger and you don't know as much because you're not as experienced. But I recently endured a WhatsApp attack from an older auntie who's a longtime auntie family friend of mine. And purposely, she put it in a group of different people in front of about 60 people, did a whole attack on me, claiming that I was engaging in elder abuse with her. Suffice it to say, that was obviously not the truth. The admin asked both of us to delete our messages. And I am now reeling from a fallout with my personal relationship with this longtime family friend, Auntie. So there are many overlapping issues here as we talk about misogyny. And, you know, I think I, I'm taking a less is more approach. Don't need to engage on WhatsApp, texting, or any sort of messaging. Less is more. So for me personally with this experience, I'm taking a less is more and silence is golden approach. So uh, let's start with Gauri. Gauri, please share one of your experiences. It could be old or recent with misogyny. Um, so I recently got to go to Paris Fashion Week and I was super excited about that. And uh, there's this girl who was also, who I actually... Uh, referred to the designer and she was very happy about that and decided she's going to go for the Paris Fashion Week too. And we thought, you know, more girls, the more the merrier, we can share a room together and everything. And then one day uh, we were sleeping very little with the schedule and trying to see the city and everything. And then I just said something like, you know, we have an early day tomorrow because we had to report by nine and it was getting late and she had some loud music playing. So I was like, can we please sleep a little early tonight because we have an early morning tomorrow. And she out of the blue said, you're a bitch, you're single, you're a bitch. And I was taken aback. <laughs> Where and did the single part and the bitch tie in with what you just said? I'm confused. Just exactly. out of nowhere? Out of nowhere. I don't know. It. Oh my gosh. And she's like, You're single. That's, and you're a bitch. And I was, she kept repeating this. And I was like, Thanks to these BWE sessions, I was able to collect my thoughts. And I was like, Excuse me, can we please back up on this? Are you calling me a bitch because I'm single? Or are you calling me a bitch just because I said, can we please sleep a little early tonight because we have an early morning tomorrow? Hmm. And then she was like, oh yeah, I mean, you, you're you good looking and everything. Why aren't you still married? Why don't you have a husband by your side? And I was like, so would you call yourself a bitch before you got married when you were single? And she she was taken aback. And I I was really riled up. I was really affected by it because this was misogyny coming from a woman who decides that she can say something mean to me just because of my single status. And then I realized like how society somehow decides that if you don't have a husband by your side, then they can somehow characterize you in any which way and somehow make you feel like you're lesser than them. And I argued this out with her that, you know, first of all, I gave you the contact for this designer. I referred you to this designer. So I thought I'm we are friends. <laughs> and for you to say something like this about my single status, it's basically none of your business. And I will choose to either, you know, date someone or live with someone. That's totally my choice. But I put her down with that. But I still am quite affected by it that somebody can use your single status or whatever it is that 
to call you names or somehow make you feel that you're lesser than what you should be or lesser than them in any way. And I feel that is like a big part of misogyny in society. We have to stop deciding what people are or what their characters are or trying to decide whether people should be married or whether they should have kids or they should not have kids or whatever. I think it's every person's individual choice. And I hope the young lady is uh, watching the show. Because my, that, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. My, me my message to her is, she probably said that to you because she's probably miserably married. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> probably. But that's yeah. what's hurtful. But, when that's like a real pot shot. Like she yeah. really went low. That was yeah. deliberate. Yeah. No one says that. I'm still shocked that she had just called you a straight out bitch. Like it was I, her prerogative to do so, right? She felt like yeah. it was her prerogative. I, I had to call a girlfriend and share this because I was so taken aback and she was like that's such a mean thing to do and I immediately walked out of the room I took a different room I was not happy in that situation but um, yeah my friend was like I think she must be like exactly what Raina said she must be in a miserable marriage and she hates to see that this girl is independent and able to make happy and single yeah yeah and she probably had to somehow get her husband's permission to go on this trip and take some money or whatever. So, yeah. 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 She saw you as a beautiful, independent, single person who lives a life on her terms, pays yeah. her own bills, does her own thing. And she probably had to go through a whole, you know, rigmarole of a jury uh, to get even the permission to get on a flight. So yeah. 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 that's yeah. sad. That's and that's sad. really sad though, when women take that liberty to judge and right. like, as if, as if they truly like, it's their calling in life or something, but you know, that's right. why this building women empowered platform is so important for those of us who don't fit the typical married with a family with kids formula, which is why I am from Southern California, but I'm here in this group, which is primarily out of Northern California for that very no, reason. No, the group I'm, is all over. I know, but what everywhere. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is like, I have found, I came to the Bay Area for, you know, to be your showstopper winner, you know, yeah. for, um, for building women empowered. And, and, and again, there's so much more acceptance here with this group, which is why, yeah. you know, Raina and this group has really opened up non-judgmental platforms. And on that note, um, let's turn it over to Viva. Please share one of your oh. personal experiences with misogyny. So this is going back a few years, uh, I'd say about two decades. Yeah, two decades ago. So when I first came to the United States after I got married, um, we had family visit us. And uh, so it was a couple and um, their son, their young son. So so these, my husband has a huge family. I have a very small family. He has like a huge, huge family. So they were visiting us from, from Delhi. And they come from a family. I mean, so, uh, the couple that was visiting, they come from a family where... <laughs> Women, sadly, are treated like, you know, they're just there to have kids and that's it. And then just do whatever the, the, the guy is asking her to do, you know. So she doesn't really have a voice of her own, the lady. So anyway, they came here, dad, son. Son was probably around nine that time. So dad, son, and mom. So they were staying with us. And I, I noticed that the, the husband would just go at his wife for no apparent reason. And I know that they love each other, but there's also, there should be respect. You know, love is not love without respect. So I noticed that the way that the guy was talking to his wife was horrible, number one. But then I also saw the nine-year-old talking to his mom in the same manner that her husband was talking to her. And that's when I turned around and I said to the, to, to the lady, I said, Bhavi, how can you let him talk to you like that? And I looked the boy in, straight in the eye and I said, you know what? If you're going to talk like that to your mom in my house, you can leave. And my husband, he was like, oh my God, Bibo, what are you doing? I said, what am I doing? I said, come on, man. You come from a family of such strong women, your mom, your sister, you know, your bhabi, your niece. And you're telling me that I should stand there and bear witness to this nine-year-old talking to his mother like that? So it's really, really sad. But obviously, this is coming from, A, a lot of family patterns. So, you know, what these people have seen at home is, is what is sadly being passed 
down to their kids. Now that same boy is getting married. Uh, he moved to New Zealand, so I think now he's a very different person. Uh, he probably dated a few girls and figured out, ah, 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 ah. the way Papa does this is not the right way. And if I mom took it, but none of my girls are gonna take it. So now when I met him, I was like, wow, you've come a long way, dude. And he was like, yeah. So you know, I think these are patterns, and they need to be. The kids need to be told or taught that this is not the way each gender has its own value and you cannot you know demean or de dehumanize somebody just because they're male or female and, so that's how my and how telling that kids are the ones caught in the middle and they get impacted as young yes. impressionable vulnerable minds who are getting brainwashed <laughs> that this is normal. And then if they're going to repeat that pattern with the next generation, unless they exactly. figure it out by going out on their own. And I'm glad this young boy turned yeah. to a grown man and realized, ah, it's not going to work. You know? Yeah. He's now engaged getting married, married in December. And uh, yeah, I think, I think he's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. That's good. Have you had like an open heart to heart with him about this, about how he used to be in his childhood and how he is now? Have, I haven't had, I, I actually haven't seen this kid in, I mean, he's a young man now. Oh, I haven't seen him, seen him in years, but uh, I will be visiting India in March. So I'm very excited to see how that marriage dynamic is going. But I'm sure he's, I know he's dated a few girls. A few girls broke his heart. So I'm sure he's on the right path now. Good. It takes heartbreak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just says, sadly, uh -huh. sadly, yes. To put you on the right path and to know what not to do. You need to, you know, have a few heartbreaks, I guess. I don't know. And that's, that sets apart the boys from the men right exactly that's how that exactly. thing goes exactly so but that's just that's really tragic it, it it's, it's terrible to see that pattern <laughs> repeated by the young ones in family that's just that's horrible and then have the women have you seen the women change at all have they gotten any independence as they've gotten older so they've yeah, been married I mean, this, to this type yeah, of dominating this, man for so long yeah have this particular bhabi this particular bhabi yeah she's she's definitely i mean i've seen her a couple of times since that incident so i think this lady's also come a long way like so when he talks to her like that you know she's just like go at him she'll be like don't talk to me like that so i'm like okay good you're you're you've learned good good but this should have happened 20 years ago when this when i first witnessed this incident well she doesn't have all the kangani, <laughs> you know difficulties oh chup, chup rana, you know bolani. oh yeah no 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 so, this lady this lady <laughs> and i'm happy she says it as it is so i don't know Great. what was going on then but she she's not that person anymore Good. Which is well, good. It's good for the yeah. whole family. We women learn as we get older. We get that independence. We get that liberation. We get that freedom. And we get that outspokenness. So thank like you that. so much for sharing, Viva. That's, uh, sure. you know, we, we hope that this this boy and this young man and his mom, yeah. that they've, you know, made some peace, and you know, yeah. over the years. He's, he's an only child. So, but I think they're good. They're oh. in a good place. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's another that's, dynamic. Yeah, that's another dynamic. Exactly. <laughs> that's another yeah. little dynamic. Wonderful. Right. Thanks for the sharing, Viva. I appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Ranjita, Thank you. handing it over to you for a personal experience with misogyny that you have had. Oh, my personal experience, like since childhood, I was the chubbiest kid um, and I, I had thyroid. So my thyroid was like making me go chubby more and my height did not grow which I was called especially from the ladies like oh um, and you know like they could but Jenny Hoenge, like it's like a lot of those kind of things, like especially coming from the women. I have a child now, uh, I've got married, but it was a different story. I got divorced because he was the same thing. He did the same thing. Like he used to belittle me a lot, like way more than what even I heard personally from other people like cursing me out for me being short for me being bad 
Um, he used to call me that I'm ugly, um, that I, I'll never get a guy. He was the only guy that I got, you know. Um, it was a lot of things that I, I got from him too to do it to the other people too, not even thinking like how you're going to hurt other people's feeling, you know. So I have been through like a lot of hard breaking um, scenarios a lot in my life um, from childhood till now. But like you said, you know, like in our culture, our parents say, oh, don't say because their elders don't say anything to them. So I used to do that. I never back answered them because that's how our culture is raised. Like, don't say nothing because, oh, you're badea, you know, right? But they did not knew what medical condition I was going through. Only my parents knew that, but they did not want to have that family disruptions in the house. Like, right. it needs to change. It needs to do not hurt other people's feelings, which is not good. How are you going to be feel when somebody is treating you the same way? You know, okay. it's, it's not right to treat people like that. So it's about culture, like a lot of cultural difference too. It's about if people are experiencing domestic violence in the house too. You know, it's a lot of different. Ranchita, Ranchita that, can you put really your video off? Maybe put your video off so we can hear you we, because you're breaking up on and off. So um, I don't know, turn your video off. To understand like in all different scenarios. Yeah, no, that sounds really horrible. And to start to go through okay, that yeah. as a child, that's awful. You can hear me and now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. That's awful to have to go, have gone through all that trauma as a child and then have it okay. continue in your marriage and then yep. have your husband engage in the same abuse. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, look, you found such an empowering way to help yourself and other women by, yes. by, by the community social work that you do. So you've turned it but around. The thing positive, is, right? I just want to thank Mrs. Reynoji because this is the group that uh, it empowered me a lot to speak up. You know, I never used to speak up for myself or care about myself a lot. But when I uh, got into the group, I started doing that. Like every single day when I read the affirmation on Facebook or BWE group from Ms. Renogy, it's amazing. Like your day is gonna go super good, okay. you know. That yeah. empowers I'm me. I'm gonna try to read this. I have been through <laughs> a lot of um abuse over here too in United States. Like, what, what is it? <laughs> I said, I'm glad somebody reads it. <laughs> every day, every single I day, Miss Renuji, every single day. <laughs> That's great. It has a lot of positive impact on a lot of women not realizing. <laughs> Yeah. She may do a post I'm glad, and she's, yeah. you know, I'm glad how many you do women that. are positively impacted by that. Thank yeah. you, Rajika. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I know this is very You're vulnerable welcome. sharing. It's very vulnerable. So thank you for really being yeah. bold and outspoken and being fearless. This, this takes a lot of courage to speak out so openly and, and fearlessly. So Reno, yeah. last yeah. but not least, last our but very but own DWE founder, yeah. Reno. What is the, oh, that you have so many stories. Pick your no, but I won't get into all of them. I won't get into all of them. But first of all, I want to say that I definitely do commend Rajita. I've known her since the day I met her when she joined the group and the transformation I've seen in her from the time we first spoke when we met and now is wonderful. So keep going, girlfriend. Don't stop. Keep going. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. you. Love you. So I want to say yeah. one of the one of the quotes that inspired me to start Women Empowered is when a man gives his opinion, he's a man. When a woman gives her opinion, she's a bitch. And I've always been known as that because I'm very opinionated. And I always got that. She's such a bitch. She's such a bitch. And I think to myself, wait a minute. Uh, that, time my, <laughs> that time my ex-husband would say whatever the hell he wanted. And people, be like, people would be listening to him. Oh, wow, wow, wow. When he did his bakwas. And when I did mine, I was told, you know, and I'd be like, where is this coming from? I just gave my opinion. And why is it that as soon as I disagree with somebody else's opinion, um, especially if it's in family or, you know, even in a conversation with men, you suddenly become this bitch. And actually, the I, I, take the, I take the word bitch as a compliment. So, Gauri, going back to what was said to you, 
I take that as a huge compliment because when somebody calls me a bitch, it means I am I have courage, I'm powerful, I'm strong, and I'm what you want to be, but you can't be. So remember that. When anyone calls you a bitch, take it as a huge compliment. It's an adjective that I want to be associated with. That's one. Thank you. Then and that gives not, us permission. <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> misogyny has been around for so long. Yeah. Aristotle had written, one of his quotes said, a proper wife should be as obedient as a slave. I mean, these are the things that were written at that time. And I wanted to give some uh, more of some statistics about what's going on because people don't think this exists. Half of the people worldwide still believe men will make better political leaders than women. And more than 40% still believe that men make better business executives than women. And this is according to the UN Development Program in 2023. Then there's a staggering 25% of the population that actually believe it is justified for a man to beat his wife. According to the report from the latest World Value Survey on what happens in homes, which is that is pretty disgusting. Um, and Tiger Woods, his comment, I had to bring that up, is that Tiger Woods faced a lot of criticism, but he also got a lot of support when he was um, playing a game and uh, he did a better shot than his partner. He gave him a tampon because, according to him, driving uh, his driving performance was reminiscent of the weaker sex. So giving a tampon to the other opponent was indicating that you didn't play as good as me because you're probably as bad as a woman. And he got a lot of flack for that, but he also got a lot of support. Believe it or not, a lot of people thought there was nothing wrong with that. So those three things, you know, these statements come out and show you that despite the world that we live in, we're still dealing with a lot of misogyny. Mis misogyny. And um, Gary, what you face, I face every single day. Yad. I'm always getting called all kinds of names. You know, I get called all kinds of names. If I say something, I get called a name. If I don't say something, I get called a name. I just say, you know, take life as a compliment. But the experience I had was um, when I had uh, got married in my second marriage. And in the, I think a year later, I got a new job as a recruiter for this company. And um, I joined the company and I was doing really well. And after one month, I found out I was, I was pregnant. I was having a baby. And um, I was very early stage of my pregnancy and I was sitting at the table and I suddenly felt something was not right. And I was sitting with my boss who was training me, who was a very, was a male chauvinist pig. And uh, I said to him, I said, you know, I need to go to the bathroom. And he goes, you just went. And I said, I know I just went, but I need to go again. And, um, and he said, why? And I first thought to myself, why do I need to even be answering this question? So I said, well, I need to go pay. That's why. And he goes, um, and then I said to him, I said, I'm uh, possibly pregnant and I need to go pee. And he goes, oh, my God, that's all you women know how to do. Get pregnant. Oh. And I, I could not believe. And he goes, and now what am I going to do? I just wasted one month training you. I mean, in one month, I'd become the top producer of his company. So I looked at him and I said, so why would my pregnancy affect my performance? I don't understand. And he goes, well, that's all you women know how to do. Now you're going to want to take time off and have this baby. Nye, 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 nye. And I went to the bathroom. Unfortunately, I miscarried in the bathroom. I came back. I just cleared my desk. I went home and I never went back. I said, I'm never going back to that company again. And that time I didn't know too much about HR laws and all that other stuff. I was still, you know, pretty new. Um, and I hadn't been exposed to working for another, a, a corporate company. I'd always worked for myself. And, but that would, to me was, has stuck in my head ever since to say, that's all you women know how to do. And I, I wish at that time I had answered this question and said, had your mother not known that you wouldn't be sitting over here, you ass, you know, but yeah. um, unfortunately there's a lot of that going on. Anything we do, if it doesn't fit in the norm of what men or other women want to see, we automatically become labeled as this character or this bitch or this person that doesn't fit in society, blah, blah, blah. And it is really disgusting. And that's why this topic is a very much needed topic. And, you know, uh, many people don't want to voice their personal experiences. I mean, domestic violence is an example of misogyny. I mean, so many things. A workplace, family, what happens in your house, how you get treated, like Vibha said, so many things that I think it's so important that when people can hear it and understand, they think it's acceptable and it's part of culture. It's not. There's no culture that says women have to be treated like shit. There's no culture out there. This is all self-made. There's no religion that says that either. It's just self-made, you know, laws made by humans to, you know, to be like that. But that's my input, um, Arti. So, <laughs> and I think, I think 
like you said, no one, no one made this up, no religion. It, no, no, this is really just conditioning from society, yes. family, all that. But really what it speaks to, which is what all of us can relate here, and which is why we're so glad to be a part of Building Women Empowered, is that women are powerful and people are scared of women's power so that all these rules are made up in society, families, belief systems, media, that thinks that women have to be brought down because we're too powerful, right? We're like jungly. <laughs> and just like you love the, the, the bitch term and, you know, you've given all of us permission to really own that bitch term if we're ever called it. I like jungly. I love to be free and wild jungly. So you you ladies can take that word also. You, you have the permission to be free, liberated, independent junglies because I sure am one <laughs> and I love it. Um, we're going to go on to the round two and uh, round two in two to three sentences, not more than two to three sentences because we've got two more rounds after this. Let's discuss the causes of why misogyny continues. I can just give three quick ones, family conditioning, media conditioning, and then the culture or society you, you grow up conditioning from that. What do you ladies think? Let's let's go with Gauri. Why do you think misogyny continues? I think it's the mindset. I think there were certain traditional norms centuries ago where men were working in the breadwinners and that caused some kind of dominance. But um, like Renu said, I don't think any culture, any religion says mm -hmm. that women are any less than men. And I think it depends totally on the mindset. And whether it's men or women who support that attitude, I think it's for their own personal uh, benefit, like because mm -hmm. they get some kind of control or power or they feel better about themselves in some ways if they see other women kind of subjugated to. Um, and I think it's a big mindset thing that we have to change. Like how you were just saying about being wild, Aarti, I just read something saying that like you know when a woman is wild then there used to be this quote apparently that uh, said that if a woman is wild then she should be married so that she will be reined in and that is the kind of attitude that prevails in society where they think it's okay to say that and that a woman should somehow be controlled by a man or you know that she can be called a bitch if she's not married and I think that's what we women have to come together and stand up against. Absolutely. Junglies and bitches unite. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All for it. All right. <laughs> Why does misogyny still continue in society? Because we let it. We let it happen. Uh, you know, th those of us who don't raise our voices and speak up. And sadly, I think a lot of women still feel like, no, take all the BS people give you. Uh, so it continues because we let it continue. It continues because the worst is like what we were talking about when other women are bringing you down. Then you think, then, you know, you have that mindset that Arish, she's a lady too and she's saying this, so I'm, maybe I am doing something or you question yourself, right? So, and then I think also most societies, even here in the West where, like Renuji said, we think they're very modern and advanced. But most societies, even today, are very patriarchal. And, you know, the man is right. The man's on top. The man's a successful one. A woman and a man at the same, you know, same education, same everything. There's a huge parity in their, uh, in, in their, in their salaries or in their pay. So it, it, it exists because we are still letting it exist. It exists because still in many parts of the world, a woman is just a childbearing machine or, you know, a, a piece of meat to have fun with. So I think you know, we need to, we need to fix our mindsets. We need to talk to other people about it. And then I think there'll be some sort of a solution. I mean, women have come a long way, but we still have a very long way to go. Absolutely. Um, so many advances, but yet so many steps back. And, mm -hmm. and it's times like now, like, you know, when there are conflicts and wars around the world that you see women are the, and girls, females are the ones targeted. You know, um, I think we need to we need to fight. We need to start fighting for the Equal Rights Amendment again, ladies. Yeah, I think that's what I'm hearing as a call to action <laughs> that should come out of this, this yeah. episode today. Right. Ranjita, Ranjita, what do you think? Why is does misogyny still continue? 
I think it's just the upbringing, you know, how people are abroad, like if they are brought into a domestic violence situation, uh, um, that could be the reason, you know, and culture factor too. It, it plays the biggest role. Culture factor is at first before we kind of judge anything else, you know, because that's the biggest thing we need to change in our society because people do not, what do you say? Do not know how to say anything and do not know how to respect other people. They want to be respected, but they do not want to give it back. They want to take the respect, but they don't know how to give it back to the other person. So they need to learn that first before they do anything. But yeah, I should say upbringing, you know, and the culture factor needs to change. Big time. Big, big, big time. Absolutely. I, th I think we're all big nodding time, our yeah. heads in unison with you. Yeah. yeah. And it, it reflects yeah. in the work that you do, right? With, with, with especially with DV. Um, so much yeah. of it is cultural and family upbringing, right? Renu. Because see, in the DV, DV2 is the same thing. Like when the kids are seeing what the abuse is going on in the house, they adapt that it's there they're because their mind are like really small, whatever they see, they're going to adapt that. And that's what they're going to do in future because that's what they're seeing in the house. They don't know what is right. What is wrong. They're just seeing, okay, my dad is doing this to my mom. So that's the good thing because my mom is not responding at this time. She's not taking any action. So that means that that's the right thing to do until unless the mom step up and say okay you know what baby this is not right you right. know we mom is staying over here is because of some reason but this is not the right thing to do right you know so yeah, yeah we need to step up and speak up first yeah lead by example and i think this platform here will really hopefully you know spread and and all the discussions here will give many more women girls men and women to help fight misogyny in mm -hmm. ways like the cultural aspect especially this is for not just yes. women men and boys have a lot to learn from this platform yes. and these discussions as well so thank you so much yes. Renzita. It, it, it's always uh You're great uh, we appreciate the vulnerability that you speak with that's really appreciated reno thank i you. want to hear from we want to hear from you why does misogyny continue so I think it's just basically lack of education. I mean, a lot of people think that their education is based on what you learn at school, but it's not. It's not what you learn at home. And I'll give two examples. Um, I see this every single day. I see this all the time when, in, my, in my school when parents are dropping off their children. And I see this when I'm dealing with people who want to buy a franchise, ignoring or speaking over the wife or the woman. People don't realize that's misogyny. It's so annoying. You know, you'll get a mom who'll come to the door and she'll have a question about a baby and she'll start the sentence and the husband will speak over her and correct her. And I'm sitting there going, you don't even feed the child. You don't even know what you're saying. Why are you interrupting her? Let her finish a sentence, you know. Um, things like the other experience I had was somebody, one parent came and they wanted some exceptions made to their tuition. And I said, no, you can't do it. And he goes, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the owner of the company. And I said, uh, I am the owner. He goes, no, you're not. He goes, that man, the gentleman who's always here, he's the owner. You work for him. I said, actually, no, I am the owner. He works for me. <laughs> and he looked at me and goes, that's bullshit. I don't believe that. And I couldn't believe it. So I called my husband and he came out and I said, can you tell this gentleman who owns the company? And he turned around and he goes, she owns the company. I work for her. He didn't know what to say. He did not know what to say. Uh, he kept, is, kept going on. And then another example is moms coming in and they can't make payments uh, because they don't have accounts. I don't get it. How can you not have a bank account? You're married. He controls all the money. Why? Oh, because he says he knows, has a better idea of funds. What do you mean he has a better idea? You should have the common sense. So I think women also want to also play victim to this whole thing and say, oh, I want to be this good wife because some impression has been given to them that when you don't answer back and you don't speak up for yourself, you are this good wife, right? So, and then I had this recent experience where somebody wanted to buy a, a franchise for their wife. Very smart young lady. She came in the office and he was sitting there. And every time I asked a question to her, because she's going to run the business, he would answer. 
So I asked him, I said, you're the engineer. She's the one with the childcare units. Why are you answering her questions? Let her speak. And then he started interrupting me. And that was enough. So I stopped him after the third conversation. And I just said, what is it that you, you can't understand? Why are you talking over me and your wife? And he just didn't know what to say. And I said, you know, what I'm going to tell you now is if you do that one more time, this conversation is going to end. The business meeting is going to end. And we're not going to have any further conversations until you learn to respect me and her. And I told his wife afterwards, you know your business very well. Why don't you speak up? She lacked confidence. She just lacked confidence because, and also, I guess she kept hearing that I'm funding this, I'm funding. You're not funding it. She's been raising the kids while you've been earning money. If she wasn't raising kids and she was out of work, you would you could be doing that at home, right? So there's no law that says that. So I think my message to women out there is this is happening because we allow it to happen. Stop. Stop it. Stand up and speak for yourself. And don't get intimidated by all these words that are used, jungly, bitch, kutti, whatever you want to call it. I take them as huge compliments, really. Um, oh. it, when somebody says that to you, no sweat. No, I, I get people tell me all the time, oh, my God, I had such a wrong impression of you. They told me you were a bitch. And I always say, I am. I, am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I do. Yeah, I say, you know, I am. How dare, how dare a woman have standards and boundaries? Yeah. Yeah. How dare. How yeah. dare you, Reno? How yeah, dare I know. You? Terrible. <laughs> you know, oh, horrible but when you are. Yeah. I think going back to your question, why is this happening? Because we allow it to happen. And if we can stop and stand up for ourselves, and don't before you can stand up for your children, stand up for yourself first. You know, and uh, then there will be change in life. You have to stand up for yourself. And if you want to win a popularity contest with your family and your kandan, then forget it. Uh, but if you're able to stand up for yourself and stand and be alone in an island, even if everybody isolates you, they'll do it for what? A little bit? No big deal. Um, I think that's that's the reason why. Yeah. And and I love what you said. Let her speak. And I put that in the chat box. That's that's a mantra. I think all women and yeah. girls let her speak. That's huge. Yeah. And then also, right. uh, how can the woman be the boss? Um, yeah. Women are the bosses of the household. They, right. they run the finances in the home. Women are amazing business owners. They are the boss. And then nobody can multitask like a woman. Nobody. Yes. Sorry. No one can Sorry. multitask better Sorry. than women. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So we've yeah. got about 20 minutes, ladies, and two more rounds left. So we're going to kind of go through, power through these next two rounds a little bit faster. So round three, ladies, how do we begin to ensure our future generation of girls and women can overcome this problem of misogyny? Gauri. I think it starts at home. Um, make sure that the girl has a voice at home. I was very fortunate to grow up in a house where my grandparents, my parents never showed any difference between a girl or a boy. We never ever questioned whether we were a girl or a boy growing up. And I studied in an all-girls school and we played and behaved exactly like boys or girls or whatever. But we had career goals. We had everything. And we never were made to feel that we were any less than boys or even when we went for these inter-school competitions and everything. So mostly the girls won most of those competitions. So I think let start at home with the way you treat girls and boys in your home and let the girls speak and give girls more, like give them the opportunities to take up leadership positions, whether it's at school in terms of making decisions at home. Yeah. So I think it starts at home. And then every time we as women in society see somebody making a misogynistic comment, even if it's like a joke, I think we have to stand up and speak against it right then and there and cut them off about it and ask them, question them about it. And don't be afraid or feel guilty if it leads to an argument. But yeah, stand up, stand up against misogyny and any any comments or jokes even about it. Totally. And I'm actually just I, I'm loving what everyone is saying. So I'm just starting to put little snippets that I'm hearing from you ladies in the chat box so we can remember. All right. Uh Vibha. How do you, how, wh what is your contribution to how girls and women of our next generation can break this pattern of misogyny? How can we do that? Yeah, I think just like what everybody's saying, you know, um, I concur. I, I agree with all of you. 
I think a lot of it starts at home, the upbringing we're giving our children. So in other words, the way women are raising, uh, their, if they have sons, how they're raising their sons, how they're raising their daughters, how they're pointing out to their husbands, if their husband's tone is not like I, I have said to my husband, don't talk to me like that in front of my daughter. Because what they watch is what they grow up and what that's what, and then he, he takes a step back. He knows when his tone is not okay. He takes a step back. And uh, so a lot of it, I think, uh, you know, uh, begins at home. Uh, your spouses or all these people who you're dealing with who are passing these rude remarks need to be put in their place then and there. You don't sleep on it and then go the next day and say, oh, you know, you said this to me and I didn't like it. Uh-uh. Because as soon as it's said, you know if it's right or wrong. So speak up, don't wait, because then they could even say, oh, you know, how come it's affecting you today? You didn't say, Tune mujhe kal to kuch nahi bola. you didn't say anything to me yesterday. You should have pointed out that. Say it then and there. So even my husband and I now, if we don't agree on something, we wait till our daughter is in bed. Because I don't want her to witness, you know, any, any of that or feel that, oh, this is how it, it's supposed to be. She needs to know that, you know, it's, it's a team and all three of us are in this together. Um, and kids watch more by learning what they learn more, sorry, by watching what you do rather than if you're talking down to them and say, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. That's not how they learn. They learn when, by observing. So they watch what you do. So you need to make sure you're setting the right example. And even behind closed doors, you know, when you are with your spouse or your significant other, they need to know what is okay and what is not okay. And I love what Gauri said, because I'm just going to throw in a quick story there. Um, I was 10 years old and we were at a dinner party at a friend's house. And my dad's kind of a quiet guy. My mother is, you know, more like vocal and, you know, the, the talkative one. But there was an uncle and he kept saying to my dad, now my dad, you know, doesn't drink and he would sometimes socially drink and the uncle kept saying oh why aren't you having a drink why aren't you having a drink why aren't you and I was just standing and looking at my dad I was like papa say something my dad didn't say anything and then I said to the guy to the uncle I was uncle why are you forcing my dad to drink if he doesn't want to have a drink I don't get it and I, I said it 10 years old I went back we started playing with my friends all done then when we sat in the car to go back home, I was like, oh, shoot, today I'm going to get it. You know, it's bade bande ke saamne she spoke. But instead, what my dad said, he said, he said, Viba, I am so proud of you. I said, really? I thought I was going to get into trouble. He was like, no. He said, I'm so proud that you were able to very respectfully but nicely tell this man to back off. And from that day onwards, my dad always encouraged me. My dad, my brother, my mom, they all encouraged me to say what I need to say. And I'm very fortunate. My husband's the same way. Uh, every time we have this, he goes so that I have a nice quiet space to do all this. So yeah, it's very important to speak up. It's very important to raise your kids right. And, and, and lucky parents you, are role like, models. Parents absolutely, are role models. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 little ones watch their parents all the time. So I always yes. tell them that. But you know, don't blame the teachers and educators. We're not the no. ones that live with your children. You know, yes. so it starts at home and it ends at home. That's where it, it ends begins. at home. Absolutely. It doesn't matter how many manners I teach your butcha in school for eight hours. <laughs> yeah. If they're going to go home and see you being a, a batamese, then that's exactly what they're going to get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, sadly, and lucky, lucky I, you, Viva, that you didn't have to deal with like tapar, jampar, tapar. You were encouraged oh, oh to my speak God. up and correct oh, adults. Yeah, yeah, lucky no, you. Yeah. And, you know, they, my parents and my husband always still, my, you know, they're so excited when I'm doing talks like this or I'm on a platform. You know, and they're so proud of me. And when you have that type of encouragement and, and support in life, it's good. And, uh, you know, I have a friend. I'm just going to quickly say this. She's going through a bitter divorce right now. And um, she's out of state. And before she and her husband separated, her husband said to their 10-year-old son, said to, said to the, the little boy, K. Zor se chaped mar is haram zadi ke mupe. The father is telling the 10 year old what? son, yes. What? And then I, she was like, I have to ask what because I'm not believing you're saying that the father is I'm, telling this I'm, to the I'm, child I'm, and to this do is, this to the mother. And this is Talk a very about. brave, very brave, very, uh, you know, very intelligent, smart woman. And uh, the good thing is, he's out of the house. <laughs> she got him out and they're going through, through it, but even the child is saying it's more peaceful at home, mom, right now. 
without you know the dad there yeah so it's this is no. so this is this is where what like Rinji and everybody saying it starts at home it starts oh, at home. starts yeah, and ends at home yeah. always yes wow yes. Yeah. Whew, that's Thank a you. shocking example but it, it is goes to show yeah. kids minds are so suggestible yeah. so yes. innocent Yes. They watch, they learn by our example. We, we are the ones who have to watch ourselves, not the kids. We teach the kids to yes. watch themselves. It's the adults that need to be watching themselves Agreed. and correcting themselves, not the other way around. Agreed. Wow. Uh, that, that's a, that's a, that example is going to stick. <laughs> Definitely. Ranjita, how do, what, with your experience okay. in particular, how do you think we begin to change the future generations of girls and women to overcome misogyny? I would say we need to talk more about this topic and raise awareness. Um, that's that's all I think. Like, but like Renuji said, Vibha, Gori, all they said, like it needs to start from home, teaching your boy, girl to speak up for themselves, not um, be culturally like, oh no, I'm not gonna say anything because they are elders, you know, and let them abuse you whether it's verbal or anything you need to speak up for yourself Wh whatever they're saying just say it right then and there and resolve the problem whether they're belittling you or anything just talk about it right there tell them you know what hey I did not feel good what you said to me can you please rephrase it or just you know apologize that's that's what I think like just because of advocate for yourself, which is the best thing that you can do to break all the barriers, you know, whether you are a woman or a man, doesn't matter, but speak for yourself. Everybody goes through an abuse, the abuse. So speak up for yourself, advocate for yourself. Um, yeah, that's what I got to say. You know, more awareness, doing um talk shows like this table events if, if you can just raise awareness like how you can advocate for yourself speak for yourself that's so powerful self-advocacy is one of the most underutilized tools yep. i think that we are not using that we should you're, you, you absolutely hit the nail on the head with that, Ranjita. And I love it so much. Thank I'm you. putting I'm putting it here in the in the chat box. So do more shows like this and self advocate. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Very very powerful. Um. All right, ladies. This brings us. To, do we have any guests hey. um, that have joined Renu? Oh no. Okay. No, no. Oh my gosh, of course. No. It's okay. Is there any guests coming? No. It's you, okay. My dear. Rena, oh, okay. we wouldn't be yeah. here. We wouldn't be here. No, 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 it's okay. You. Don't worry. What you know, is I, your, yeah, yeah, what's your answer? Because you see so much of this every single yeah. day. You have so much vast experience. You know, it's, I think we have to speak up for them ourselves. And I think it's also just history that's been carried for thousands of years. For example, and this is a topic that's going to be one of our topics coming up, is, for example, our menstrual cycle has been a source of shame and discrimination for women. Why? I don't get it. Why? You know, I mean, God damn it, you men wouldn't be here if we didn't have this menstrual cycle. Neither would, would, would women, right? But I just don't get it. And that's another topic in itself. But I think this is just carried on through that comes through cultures and through history, whatever that, or, you know, again, women are treated as inferior because you're, you know, considered dirty when you're having a menstrual cycle. Um, you know, interrupting us when we speak, uh, you know, another thing is very common is stealing ideas from women and not giving them credit, especially in companies that happens all the time, or we're saying no, she couldn't have thought about that. So it goes back to, um, you have to speak up for yourself, you know, and if you, and it starts from home, and you have to have the confidence and the, to know that, yeah, in that process of speaking up for yourself, you may lose a few stupid relatives and friends, and that's okay. Because life is so much more peaceful without stupidity, let me tell you. In life is so much more peaceful. You guys are all young. I'm in my 60s and I've gone through all the rubbish and the bakwas that um, we all go through in our life. Everything from the divorce, the abuse, the, the relatives, the, 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 the nonsense, you know, even now, you know, dealing with bitchy women all the time. Um, and all I can tell you is, is that 
clean up your life, clean up your clutter. When you bring clutter into your life, it brings you down. So for me, I'm very much about, I, I believe that I become who I hang out with. And if I'm going to hang out with stupid people that are going to judge me and, 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 if not, and I have to be fake in front of them, then that's very tiring. How much acting can you do all the time? You just can't. So clean up your social circle. Um, you have these different circles, but your immediate inner circle should be people that bring value to your life, bring positivity. And uh, and then after that, you have, the, you know, you have your social circle for your parties and you have your your entrepreneur circle or your work circle. But that immediate circle is what impacts you. And they you give them the power to say all this crap to you because they get too comfortable. So it goes back to the show that we did last time about boundaries. You know, you could have your boundaries. And don't get affected. It's only silly words. Never get affected. So my message to you, Miss NRI Global, and uh, our showstopper, our winners. I mean, you of course, if you're going to participate in shows and you're going to win, of course you're going to get jealousy. Come on, it comes with a package. Anytime you're successful, jealousy comes with a package. With jealousy comes comments like this. So you just got to understand that if you're going to be in the public eye, you're going to have to face it, right? And deal with it, but speak up. Don't get affected. Not worth it. Yeah. But <laughs> 100%, especially with, you know, you've been a public figure and you've learned so many lessons by doing all the, the wonderful public things you have done. And now you're passing it on to so many women and girls and kids in your business. And that is why you were able to congregate like 1800 women in your building women empowered group within like a month. So something, you know, radical like that. And you aren't attracting like attracts like, right? Raina, yeah. you learned that. It does. Yes, it does. It does. Absolutely. And, and so your vibe attracts your tribe. And I, I'm telling you, your vibe attracted me. And, it's and don't try and fit into others. That's good job. Don't try and, so yeah. true. Yeah. And don't try and fit into their uh, puzzle. Let them fit into you. You know, people have to fit into my jigsaw puzzle. I'm not going to go come find space in yours. You need to fit into mine. And if you fit into yeah. mine, great. If not, that's okay. We're not meant to be. No problem. Unapologetically be yourself. Don't give yes. a damn. Never yes. apologize. That's why I have to keep giving myself yes. though because I get so affected. Uh, but now it's, you know, as we age, it gets easier. Yes, hopefully. it does. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You're so right on that. And, and, and even in the last show, we talked about this, that most women who have their own talk shows are age 40 and above. You don't see younger women under 40 having their own talk shows because they haven't learned the skills that like what Reno has learned and what she's passing down to a lot of us who are finding the permission, right? We need the permission of like a strong woman like Reno to do this outspoken stuff. And that's why I put the word outspoken when we did this type of I love misogyny. that word. I Very, it. Yes. It's yeah. a giving women the permission to be outspoken about misogyny being wrong. Hate against women and girls being wrong. So and if you is, notice in today's conversation, it was a lot about women against women. Yes. yes. Sadly. You know, sadly. Some men, but it was a lot yeah. about women against women. Yeah. And that's what they say. A woman is a woman's worst enemy. We need to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yes. and you are absolutely through building women empowered Renu and, and all the, the women who are actively engaging. Yeah. And we're really finding, looking for that permission and finding that permission to do that and, and giving other women the permission to do that as well. So this brings us now ladies to our final segment, which is our yeah. conclusion. And um, before I give each one of you a chance to give your concluding remarks on um, how, what's, what's your vision on how you can contribute to empowering women away from misogyny, because we are our own self uh, critics. We are our own worst self critics. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll just quickly go with my summary and then I'm gonna hand it over to each of you. Um, as I, I keep saying again and again, I came to Building Women Empowered, um, which is not based out of SoCal because I needed a fresh change out of SoCal because it, even though where I've lived where I've lived for nearly 38 years, I am an outcast because I'm divorced. I'm single. I'm a bitch because of it. <laughs> right, Gary? You're jungly. You're jungly. jungly. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, the, the hair, right? <laughs> oh <laughs> <No>. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> and and oh, I don't God. have kids. And when you don't have children, oh, that God. also seems to give women uh, a green light to yeah. be to be misogynist oh. against women. Like, oh, you didn't have children. Oh, you must see something wrong with you. You're not blah, whatever, whatever nonsense. Oh. Anyway. 
So that's why I think also, you know, partaking in um, the NRI Global Showstopper competition was like, you know what, I'm not here to impress anybody. I'm competing against my own self. And I think that confidence shown on stage, which may help me win. But you know what helped me win? What happened backstage or what didn't happen backstage? Not a single caddy bitch backstage. Can I just tell you? Not Hi. a single one. We all amplified one another. We yes. were there for one another. We helped with, with hair, makeup, you know, opinions. We pinned each other up. There was not a bitch backstage. <laughs> Junglies, maybe, okay. but not bitches. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and and, okay. and last, last point, you know, Rena, you brought up, um, or I think one of the ladies brought up, forgive me, I forget who it was, that women are not seen as good political leaders. Yeah. And that... 2020 lockdown and everything caused right. a lot of isolation, depression for me. That's so what right. am I going to do sitting at home alone? No husband, no kids to bug, no one to bug me. Okay, let me go. I ran from politics. I ran for a local uh, education seat and I didn't win it, but I got third out of fourth place. But I got 68,076 votes, which makes me the highest Indian American vote getter in all of SoCal. As a woman, that's a big deal. But guess what? Guess where I got? I got misogyny from both men and women. Did anyone in our community support me? No. Did no. they give me votes? Probably did. But did they, did they give me money? No. no. Because again, they don't think women can run for politics. But I hopefully I'm changing that down here a little bit. But let's hand it over to, to each of our ladies now for your last closing comments on your vision for changing misogyny. Gauri, go ahead. Hun. Yeah, I think it all starts at home. And um while we were having this discussion, I was just mentally thanking my mother for being who she has been because she has two daughters. And while we were growing up, I remember a lot of people in the community used to ask her if she wanted a son. And she was like, no, I'm totally fine with two daughters. Mm -hmm. And I love her attitude and the way she brought us up. And when I was about 10 or so, I was quite taken aback because here there was mom who always brought us up with that idea that yeah, I have two girls. Why do I need any more children? And my aunt had a son and her second child, she, her ultrasound showed that she was going to have a girl. And she just kept crying miserably. And I was like, but why would she be unhappy about it? But, and my mom tried to console her and everything just because she was so unhappy. But, um, Interestingly, she ended up having two sons, but now years later, oh. she actually told my mom that, you know, I always thought a son would be great, but now I actually see your daughters and I realized that maybe it would be nice to have had a daughter because they're the ones who actually take care of the parents. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. Thanks. Bingo. Thanks. Bingo. But, but how lucky for you to have the mom that you did who yes. valued you and your sister as girls equally, if not more than having boys. And that's something culturally, like, I, I, does this still happen? Like, is there Rona Dhona still happening when like, there's a girl yes. and not a boy? Oh, God. Some places, much, sadly, yes. Oh, God. My, my, my aunt is younger than my mom, like at least 10 years or more. And she's still like, though it's a different generation, she's still, I think it depends on how they were raised too. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we've got yeah, lots of work to do and we're doing mom, that. So, yeah. Yeah. Interestingly, I think I have to give a lot of credit to my grandparents too, because my mom was the only daughter and they had five sons, but they raised her equally like how they raised the sons. <laughs> there you go. And that's, again, it's like, we're all agreeing here. It starts at it's home. It ends home. at home. Uh, yeah. Yep. ends at home. Viva, what is your vision for empowering women and girls away from misogyny? So definitely, like I said before, you know, how we behave as a society, how we're raising our own children, as well as, you know, like if you're seeing something outside of your own home, speak up, say something like it was not easy for me as a new bride to shut that boy down. But I did. Um, I knew that, you know, this could go back to India and they could say, oh, my God, Viba such a bitch. But uh, I said it because it was wrong. And so, yeah, just stand up for what you're saying. And of course. Uh, you know, join more panels like this where people are talking about stuff that's going to empower you. And then you in turn will pass the message on. And that's how the empowerment will happen from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. Absolutely. And, and uh, I, I'm just, you know, summarizing the panel's uh, comments that I like here in the chat box. 
Ranjita, what is your vision I'm, for empowering girls and women away from uh, misogyny? For me, technically, I'm just doing um, the, you know, working at shelter and working with different women. And uh, that's my way of goal right now, what I'm doing and raising awareness like that, how to speak up for themselves uh, just by educating them. Um, that's, that's my goal. That's how I am going right now. But looking forward for more of that, uh, doing tabling events for things like this where I can raise awareness. Um, that's my next goal. So let's see where life takes me. But that's what I would love to do. And that's what my goal is focused on. Fantastic. And you've come a long way. Yep. So keep going, girl. Yep. And Thank our you. last but not least, give us your wisdom, Renu. Yeah. What is the answer? <laughs> well, the Are first thing I want to do is I challenge Tiger Woods to putting on a tampon. That's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm writing that in the chat box. Yeah, it's very, it's very easy to hand someone up. Well, how about you try putting one up, okay? That's the best thing do I've that. you do. Yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> I hope somebody tags him on this one. Um, you know, it goes back to, it begins with, when we say begins with home, it begins with yourself. And if you can empower yourself to, to love who you are and accept who you are and be happy with who you are and what you've got and what you've been blessed with and stand up for yourself, the battle's already done right there. The battle's literally all done. You can't just always look for other people for support because- if you don't have the confidence in itself to, you know, to hold yourself together. So I think that's very, very important. And I think as women, we all need to learn to stand together. And I can just never understand. This is one thing I've never understood, that when somebody starts something, other people want to just try and mushroom it out and try and duplicate, thinking they can do the same thing. Do, do people understand the word empowerment? Empowerment means bringing power to yourself and others. And a lot of people send me messages, and I hope I can clarify this again. Why don't you let us do our sari shows on BWE? Why don't you let me host my jewelry show? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I upset a lot of women, and they think I'm not promoting their business. It's not that. Feel free to promote your business with a simple business card, but go back to the mission of building women empowered. Read what that mission statement is. It's about empowering each other, not just networking and having parties. We can all throw parties. But the ones who are really suffering are not going to come to those parties. They will listen to shows like this. They will come to events where they know they can meet somebody that can, they can be mentored by. And so with all due respect, there's so many pages and groups on Facebook where you can sell your jewelry and your clothes and your cakes and your whatever you want to do. But I want them to, I want BWE to be a forum where we get together. And if somebody is listening today and you may connect with the chemistry of Arti or Gauri or Vibha or Anjito or myself, whoever it is, you know, your people have different chemistry and you feel I can reach out to this person. This is what this forum is. This is because all these women on this forum today are here to help you. And it's not just about misogyny. It's about everything, everything in life. We're here to help you. And that's what BWE is about. And I hope that was my retirement goal is to create a platform where we could, I could get a group of women together. It didn't matter if it was 10 women, 20, thousands, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Who can all have the mindset to not only empower themselves every time, but also empower one other person. And if you can make a difference in the life of even one person every day, even by a simple kind word, uh, it, it'll go a long way long long way just that itself you're supporting uh, you know people so and this is not this is not a man bashing show at all a lot of people think we bash men we don't bash men we actually end up bashing a lot of women because that's how we get bashed back by them this is a show to give us the empowerment to move on in life because life is not that easy it's very difficult we have a lot of challenges every day that we have to deal with with what's going on in the world it's not a very happy place so let's make it happy at least for a few moments of it absolutely and, and, and I love that that quote, Renu, of yours, that make a difference in just one more person's life every single day. And it just gives us that much more purpose because um, we're uplifting ourselves when we uplift others yes, and we absolutely. forget that. Yeah, so thank you. thank you so much, ladies. Gauri, no, thank Diva, you, Rangita, Renu, for joining thank you. today. 
This was an amazing panel of such a critical topic dealing with misogyny, but I think we were outspoken enough, right? Bitches oh, and jungles. Yes, yes. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yes, five attacks the yeah. jungly tribe. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, bitches in the house. Bitches <laughs> 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 okay. okay. I, I love that. I, love I, that. I, I think you, we're here inspired to now do Thank the next you. round of empowerment and, you know, just let our vibe attract our tribe, be a bitch, sure. jungly you know uh what, what, what did you say <laughs> there are many more i could give you but we'll I stop know. right there that's another show guys thank you. That's that's another show. Show. <laughs> but a special thank thanks you. to arti uh for yeah, hosting you, the show arti. thank you so much and My pleasure. Uh, we will be back uh next month with another interesting topic uh yeah cool. and maybe tag thank you can do the next time yeah, yeah. Thank and we want to say that. Thank you. Yeah, we have so many good oh, topics fun. that came out today. Yeah. 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 Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we want to thank we want to thank oh, yeah. TV you. for live streaming this on their oh, yeah. YouTube channel. Absolutely. And if our viewers loved it, if liked it, loved it, want to see more of this, and hopefully we can bring more of the next episodes sure. onto Dia TV um, and be more outspoken. Yay! Yeah. Thank, well, thank you, Dia. I personally so feel very yeah. empowered to be part of this group, yeah. and you have made totally. my day. And <laughs> I feel so happy to have this group of non-judgmental people and supporters. Agreed. Right. Thank, Agreed. You. Agreed. Thank, you. Thank you. It's a blessing. Thank you, ladies. Each one of us is stepping one. up into our own power, right? Oh, Through these yeah. talks. And We're uplifting others. And that's helping so others. satisfying. Yeah. Thank you, right. ladies. Thank Good you night. again Bye. for joining. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bia TV. Thanks, Renu.